Today in geometry, let's look at constructing points of concurrency. Now remember, concurrency means where three or more lines meet at one point. So it's a point of concurrency. So let's do an investigation with three angle bisectors for a triangle. All right, so here I have some random triangle that I made. And what I want to do is I'm going to make angle bisectors. And remember, there's three of them. So what I usually do is that I kind of just block out the things that I don't need. I'm going to start off here with angle A. I'll make an angle bisector. So to do that, I'll just go ahead and put my needle on A, my vertex. I'll go ahead and hit my top two sides of this angle. Here's one, here's the other. Now what I'll do is that I will now put my needle where it intersects and I'll make a mark here that looks like it's around halfway but I'll know exactly where it is once I do it again from the other side. So I am bisecting angle A and This is my angle bisector. Now I still have two more to do. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. And you can go ahead and pause the video. Okay, I want you to notice something. Well, first is that they all meet right here at this point. And things can start getting messy. So make sure that uh, your tallies, you make them light and you keep an eye on them, see exactly which ones you're actually using uh, once you start getting to your second and, and third angle. So. This must be some sort of special thing. Remember, here we use three angle bisectors. But why is this special? Well, let's see. Using my compass, why don't we see how special it is? So I'm going to put my one of my endpoints for the compass on my point of concurrency. And if I compare that to the sides that it's touching, I'm going to notice that it is equidistant from the sides of this triangle. OK? So I notice that this point is equidistant. from the sides of the triangle, from the sides. And it must have a special name. So the special name for this point of concurrency is called the in-center. So that's three things that we can see right there. So if you have, let's say, uh, a trail that uh, intersects at a triangle, and you want to find the spot where you can set up, let's say, a water station or a first aid station that is equidistant from the trail, what you'd want to find out is the in-center. Not only that, using the in-center, you'll be able to make an inscribed circle because, let's see, where an inscribed circle is a circle inside of the triangle, and I was off here by a little bit. So notice that 
my circle is now on the inside of my triangle. Used to create inscribed circles. We still have another case. Let's go ahead and make another random triangle. Why don't we make three perpendicular bisectors? So once again, I'll make this A, B, C. So for a perpendicular bisector, remember, I'll, it's like finding the midpoint, uh, except I'll get to connect the whole the whole line. So opening up your compass past halfway, I'll make a tally up here, whoops, tally down here, okay, switch over, here and here, so I know that from here to here, if I was just looking for the midpoint, I would just make a point right there, but I'm looking for the perpendicular bisector, so I'll go ahead and connect down, and it bisects this side, but there's still three more. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video. You can pause it and catch up with me. All right, you should be done by now, and let's take a look at what happened here. So we have, once again, a point of concurrency that we made with three perpendicular bisectors. And let's see why it's special. Um, this time, I'm going to go ahead and go to my point, and I'm going to compare the distance from the point A the point to B, and finally the point to C. You'll notice that it is the same for all of them. So in this case, this one seems to be equidistant from the vertices. So equidistant from the vertices. So a scenario here would be something like uh, you have three teams. Okay, and you have an objective in the middle, and they need to run to the middle, and you want to make it fair. Okay, you want everybody to be the same distance from, uh, from your objective. So let's say something like, I don't know, Hunger Games, where you would have, this one just has, let's say, three people, uh, where you have three people, and you need to place the, the weapons somewhere that's equally fair to all of them, so you would want to find this point of concurrency. So it's special, so it must have a name. And the name for this one is called the circumcenter. Now the circumcenter also has something else that's pretty important. The circumcenter will let you make a circumscribed circle. So here, by using the circumcenter, okay, like I said, all the vertices are from are the same distance from it. If I go ahead and connect them all, notice that I'm going to make a circle that is circumscribed and it's going all around my triangle. So circumscribed circle. Let's do another one. Uh, this one actually happens to be my fave. And you'll see why in a little bit. So some random triangle. And once again, labeled A, B, C. Now this time what I want to do is I want to find 
three medians. Now medians go from a midpoint to the opposite vertex. Okay, so I'll first have to find the midpoint, and this time I'll find AB. So do this one with me. Let's go ahead and get that midpoint. So here, here, let's see, here and here. I didn't go far enough, so make it farther. So this time I don't connect them. That's not what I'm looking for. I, I'm looking for a perpendicular bisector. I'm just getting midpoint and connecting it to the other side. The other, sorry, the opposite vertex. Okay, I got one medium. Go ahead and pause the video. I'm about to speed this up. Go ahead and catch up with me. made of three medians, they all connect at one point. Now, this one, like I said, is my favorite. This one's actually called the centroid. Uh, let's look at the boring part of it before I show you why it's my favorite. Besides the name, the name's pretty cool. So, the centroid. So if I only look at one line that I made, one of the medians, and I compare from the side to my centroid to the vertex. Okay, I'll just go ahead and flip this over. Whoop. Flip it over again. Whoop. Whoop. You'll notice that this part of the line is twice as long as this. And that actually will happen to, to any side that you try. So I'll try this line. So I'll go from here to here, here to here, and I'll land on the vertex. So one of the important things is that this length is twice this length. Again, of course, you can say it the other way, that this is half of this one. Now, if you for some odd reason want to see why the next part's cool, you can go ahead and, and do this same thing on a construction paper. Cut this out, cut out your triangle after you found your centroid, and I you can go ahead and put your pencil just like this and put your triangle on top of your pencil, okay, so that your pencil is touching the centroid. You should notice that your triangle is balanced. Okay, that's because your centroid is the center of gravity. Okay, so for uh, any of the triangles, if you are touching the centroid, your triangle will be balanced. Okay, that's it for today. Until next time.